very strong. It's very tippy. And this one was actually designed to be very tippy for a couple of reasons. First of all, as you saw, we had all of those stacked together. And because this has a very flat bottom, it makes it much easier to stack all the boats together. The other thing is, if you're trying to lift up a hundred, uh, anywhere between a 20 and a hundred pound fish, some of which don't like to come to the surface of the water, it'd be very difficult to have to lift them all the way up and into the boat. So in this case, we use actually this boat You can see how much weight we have on this one side. No, not all. No, that one, not, not too much. But you can see how much <laughs> left is all the way on the side of the boat. And you can imagine if you pull the fish up and you get just the skills on the edge here, where you can do is flip your weight. The de or different design features of having a flat bottom is it makes it easier to sail this boat. As I said, it's got a flat bottom. So what you can do is you can use the behind, which is where the side and the bottom meet, to act as a keel if you need to sail it. The other thing that you would do when you're sailing is to have a single oar sticking back in this notch here to act as a pillar. And then if you look at the seat behind Mary Kay, there's actually a hole there where they can step the mast and sail the boat. Now, one of the other reasons you have an oar sticking out the back here is if the fishing grounds are very crowded. Uh, as Jim was saying earlier, this, the Dutton here had 10 dories on board. And if you imagine 10 schooners each having 10 dories in a very small area, you don't have a lot of people to run out of space. Yeah, I'll just get it set up here. So, Mary Kay's going to do is back this up a little bit first. And what you can do if you have a lot of boats in this one small area, you notice how wide Mary Kay's are, the oars are, or how wide the wingspan is for boats. The other thing you can do, once you stop rowing, put an oar in the back here, and you can do basically moving the oar in a figure eight motion called sculling. You can get the boat to move forward. Now, another thing with the wide oar with bob, you do that for a lot of boats in the area. Now, normally what would happen is the person in Mary Kay's position had, her, had their oars out for rowing. The person in my position would also be seated here, and would have, as you see it here, we have these, to be rowing together. Now one of the other ways this boat can be moved is it can actually, we can row it what's called Portuguese style. You don't know what they call it, Portugal. Well, what would happen in Portuguese style, the person who might take over control of the oars, and actually take the boat for the way. that 
over the side and then start then start laying the trawls out. When Sarah lays the trawls out, you gotta lay it out using a little stick called a gob stick. That gob stick allows you to put your hand in that tub without getting them full of hooks. Hooks was a common thing on board vessels. People getting hooks put through their hands. Uh, a good movie to watch is Captain's Courageous. When the young boy falls off the steamer and gets a hook in his hand. So what they do is they cut the, the arm off and pull it through. The only way to get it off without any damage. So you imagine you're laying out, that dory's going to lay out about 900 hooks. Just one dory. You've got 10 dories there. What sailors referred to, or fishermen referred to, as a mug up. Mug up is what we call a coffee break. Uh, they had mug up, they, they were really fed very well. They had four major meals a day uh, food, breakfast, uh, breakfast, dinner, and fish. And a good pull would be a fish every fourth hook. That's, that's a con or a halibut. You're also going to catch trash fish. The most common trash fish you're going to catch are skate are dogfish. Dogfish was is in the shark family, which is like a small sand shark. Uh, and uh, they would back and chop them for bait. Uh, today, dogfish quite often used, you go to England, and you have fish and chips, they're dogfish. They're really nice, clean, white meat. Uh, and, and it's very tasty, so used quite a bit. Back then, they didn't consider it edible, but today it is, it is edible. So when they got that dory full of fish, they bring her back alongside the schooner where they toss the fish up onto the deck using a, a little device called a gig. It's a three prong with no with no barbs on it, just an open three prong hook. And they gig them and throw them up on the deck. They couldn't just throw them on the deck because the belt was jawing back and forth. But if you notice all these little slots all along years ago, I know what you're going to hold your nose and I know I spit it right out. So they made you take that every day. They're brave people. They had to swallow quick. <laughs> but the cards were taken, the were taken out. Sometimes the hearts would be removed and they would cook them on board. And, it, and, it, and if they were splitting the fish for salting, like you see over in our plate, there's a salt plate. Uh, the fish, they'd remove the cheeks of the cod because they tore the heads off. And they would, that's called a four man scallop. Something's cooked out. It's just dry. It is still salty. And why everybody didn't, didn't have you no know, problems with salt back then, I don't know. But nobody, nobody died. Like we're all worried about our cholesterol. Everything they ate was salt. Uh, didn't seem to bother.